Wow. Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl in the And your boy, Stan Lab. Alright, we're coming on in here with Queen Sugar. You know, that's yeah. this is my show. Yeah. After talk, see, this is how it works. After Tyler Perry pisses us off, yeah. Queen Sugar brings me back together. Yeah. Get me back centered. There's something about Queen Sugar that just calms oh, me down. down. Yeah. So, let me do the YouTube thing. If you are a new subscriber, welcome to the family. Yeah. If you are oldie, y'all know what to do. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Get you some popcorn, maybe get you a glass of wine, a cup of soda. Uh-huh. Uh Smoke your trees. You do. Hey. Do visit. whatever do whatever makes you feel good. Yeah. Visit Nova. She'll hook you up. Yeah. Tell her to use my special coupon code listed below. Yeah. Smoke till you took. So, um 2018. <laughs> <laughs> No heaven in my shadow. And I was like, okay, what's going on? So y'all know last week when we left off, we saw that Dollar don't came back on the scene. I said, okay. At this point, I'm ready for Dollar to be back on the scene. Let's what? just stop. Yeah. Let's what? stop the FaceTime stuff. See, I'm 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 growing a little bit. Oh. I okay. still don't trust her, but You you've been delivered? No, no. Oh no. man. I, I forgive. But you, I'm still hey, is you looking at her with one eye or two eyes? Oh, I got both. Okay. Both of them on okay. at all times. Okay, so come to find out, the reason that she is back in town was because this is Blue's birthday week. So she's coming to see her baby, which she should. Yeah. And Ralph Angel was like, okay, so why didn't you tell me that you were coming? Okay, first of all, Ralph Angel, how she going to tell you something when, when you, you don't, don't never talk, talk to her? her? You say the phone come on, you be like, hey, your mama, talk to your mama. <laughs> and that's what she said. She said, I've been trying to tell you, you don't talk to me. But as long as my son is in St. Joe, I'm going to be in St. Joe. So no, she don't right. told him, I'm not going anywhere. What we need to do is we need to figure out how we can co-parent, mm -hmm. you know, take care of Blue, you know, kind of equally divide the responsibility mm -hmm. and let's do it from there. You know how Ralph Angel is. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it. I'm going to keep see. doing it. Anything that needs to be done at the school, I got it. And she was like, but you don't have to do, do all by yourself. Yeah. So she did notice that Blue has plastic sheets on the bed. And she talked to Ralph Angel about it. And he said, you know, he's been wetting the bed since you left. And she's like, well, why didn't I know about something like that? And he was like, because Blue's embarrassed by that. He, I mean, of course, kids are embarrassed by that. But you can tell his mama, though. But that's what she said. She said, but mama I'm still you. his mm -hmm. mother. Mm -hmm. And you are still his father. So this way it got real. <laughs> he looked at her, because y'all know how Ralph Angel do. If I could critique one thing. Ralph Angel, we don't know what you be talking about half of the time. Because yeah, you mumble. You mumble and talk low. And yeah, I be sitting know, there. Yeah, 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 I said, this yeah, good 4K TV that I got, uh -huh. I, I'm like this. Can you put the waffles on for me so I can understand what he's talking about? But he said, you know, um, yes, you are his mother, but everything has changed. Everything. And gave her the look like, and I said, oh, so are we going to discuss that you got that boy tested? Mm -hmm. Are we going to do a game? You remember the game? Yeah, uh-huh. When, <laughs> when homegirl <laughs> got Darwin's son tested? Yeah. Knew, that was my freaking show. But back to Queen Shay. They messed they mess that show they up. Mess that show they up. The that game show up. was my show. Yeah. So he didn't go into, you know, whether or not, you know, about the testing of Blue and whatnot. But he let Dollar know that everything has changed. And I said, Dollar, did you pick up on what he trying to tell you she without probably, telling you? She probably did, but she probably won't start no trouble because she was there to see her son and want to keep things on a level playing field because she know Ralph would take go from one to ten real quick. And let me say this right here before you continue. All right. At the end of the day, when parents do that booze kit, the one that suffers is the child. All the time. So, us as adults and parents need to get off our high horses. We might not be right, but we want to make sure it's right for the kids, man. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Blue is got a dad, which is good. But he, you need that combo, man. Yeah. Yeah, you really need. Now, I'm not saying that you can't be a single mom and a single dad and raise a child. I've seen it done and people come out real good. But it's still something about that combo. And you can have the combo, which they can have that right now. Yeah. They can have that. Mm, they're new normal. Yeah. So, yeah. So, to Dollar's surprise, when she thinks she's coming to celebrate Blue's birthday, Blue has made it up in his mind that, no, we're not going to um, celebrate <laughs> my birthday. My life is skit right now. 
what am I celebrating? And that's basically how Blue was. He says, you know what, what I want to do is I want to do a bonfire like I used to do with Pop. And I want to commemorate his life with a bonfire on Friday. So everybody has jumped on board with this idea and come to find out it is a tradition that has been passed on and passed on, passed on. Mm -hmm. And they haven't done it since, you know, Daddy Bordelon has passed away. So that's Blue's way of... Let me see about getting my family, family back, back together. together. Like old soul food. You bucked up the family. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was cool. Until this happened over here. I said, okay. It like, always takes but a these child. Kids, these days, they're smart. You don't think kids are smart. They, they pick up on when something ain't right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And people listen to the kids, man. Hmm. Sometimes. Well, at least the blue anyway. Yeah. <laughs> they said, I don't want to celebrate my birthday. He said... I want to do a bonfire. Now that's deep. What child you know don't want to celebrate their birthday? <laughs> he said my life is bumped. <laughs> now see, see, some of these kids will be like, I want to celebrate my birthday, and I want and we're gonna do, the, and we're gonna do the bonfire, <laughs> and y'all gonna get me gifts. Yeah, just for messing my birthday. Yeah, up. messing it up. Yep. So, all I want for my birthday is a mm mm. Not blue. <laughs> not blue. No. Nope. No. We can't get no big blue. No. Mm mm. No. 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 We're not doing that. So. Oh, you can sing the other song um, by um, Candy Daughter. Hmm. You've missed my first <laughs> Ross could do that thing better later than ever. Uh -huh. <laughs> you missed the first <laughs> And that's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So y'all know that Aunt Vi had to go down into the church. And she is writing them these big checks to use their kitchen so that she can push out her um, pie pies. Well... Miss Effie, aka Shimmering Lights, hey. from If Loving You Is Wrong, she pushing around her weight a little bit too much. She comes in the middle of Aunt Vi cooking her pies and told her, look, you gotta go. Aunt Vi said, ho, 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 I write good checks. Checks that clear. Hey. Um, And the agreement was that I can use this from this time to this time, and right now ain't the time for me to get out of this kitchen. That witch told her, said, listen, these good church ladies, that come to church have been using this kitchen on every Wednesday for their dinners. So had they been putting up in the money like I had? And I'm going to need you to pack your skit up and get your pies up out of here. So these good church folk can do what they need to do. And I said, hold on, wait a minute. See, Aunt Vi realized that she was in the church house and mm -hmm. she didn't, she didn't, she didn't want to call a scene in front of the Lord. <sighs> the Lord is everywhere. So if I'm going to Kirk out at Walmart, I can Kirk out at church. <laughs> I knew you was going to say that. Haven't you seen me Kirk out before, Church? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not proud of it, but I've done it. I immediately went into prayer, too. You be, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, Bishop said, Bishop said, Lynette, 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 come on. Because like, oh, I'm I not want, going. I don't want none of these church folk to go to heaven tonight, you know. We need them here to do a little bit more work. <laughs> we need them to do a little bit more work. Because <laughs> when I click off, it is over. Mm -hmm. Like, stay on. <laughs> Keep on, Lord. Keep the light on. <laughs> Don't turn the light off. And he always looks at me like, <laughs> it's happening. Somebody else, please, Garrett, it's happening. So, because of Vi was probably rushing, trying to get those pies in the box, get them in the vehicle to get them to where she needed them to go, when they got to the place to make their drop-off, Hollywood noticed that it was a bunch of the pies that was smushed. So, he came up with the idea. He said, you know what? We're going to need to get you a delivery truck. Mm -hmm. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Uvi is fighting him tooth and nail. And I'm like, Uvi, you know, it ain't like he just said, you know, I want to I want to build you another house. Or I want to get you another box rig. truck, man. It's a truck that you need for something that you're passionate about. So I'm like, what's the big deal? And then I had to check myself. And I said, Lynette, you are Uvi. So you're so hypocritical because you can't even say nothing about nothing like that. Because I'm just like that. Mm-hmm. I don't like for people to do nothing for me. Mm -hmm. And to hear Unvi's explanation, I but said, I see it on Bingo. both. I see it on both sides, though. See, when you're a person that came through and somebody done did something for you, and they hold that skit over your head, you get to the point you don't want nobody to do nothing for you again. That's me. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, then me too. I did this. So like, don't do nothing. I do it myself. So if it don't go right, it's on me. You can't do a Veronica, a Jim, and a Candace <laughs> on me. <laughs> But it's wrong though. You can't be. You can't be. You gotta let somebody help you. Man. You can't put that on everybody. Yeah, yeah. Everybody so I've learned that I can't do it with. Like I can do it 
I can let but you, you got to prove it. yourself to me first, though. Exactly. I can't just let you just do. You just can't walk and be like, hey, can I do this for you? I'm like, nah, no. I'm good. I hang around you for a little while first to see mm -hmm. what kind of person you is. Uh uh. You know, if the Lord don't show me <laughs> right away, you know, I got to do it myself. <laughs> So what about, and you know, that fibromyalgia is, um, it's fibromyalgia? No. What she got? Is it lupus? Lupus. Lupus. Why did I say fibromyalgia? That lupus oh, is flaring up on her. Because at first, that's what everybody was saying it was. So that's right, yeah, yeah. And lupus is flaring up on her. You know, that's her hard work and stress, all of that. <laughs> you know, it's triggers for that. So, Hollywood said, I have gone down to the junkyard. I said, that's some country stuff for yeah, your tail. Uh -huh. He said, I went to the junkyard. They got a truck down. It's only going to take a couple hundred dollars to fix this truck up. Mm -hmm. I can get a refrigeration system going on in there. We can get those pies. We can put a lift on the back. All the break back, um, the back breaking work. Uh, you don't lose no inventory. You get your skit there, and while you drive it, everybody know that your pie's on the way. And I said, Yeah, that's a good idea. Come through. And I said, No, I'm not going to take your money or none of that. I'm going to do it my way, the way that I want to do it. Because, hmm. like we said, at the end of the day, everybody that has done something for me has held it over my head. Jimmy hmm. Dale bought this house. Uh -huh. And every time I came in the door, he let me, me know. know. Mm -hmm. So I understand what she's saying. Hey, you remember we had to make the trip to the junkyard that time? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I gotta tell him this one. I, I was hoping you wouldn't tell that story. <laughs> See what had happened, this is good. What had happened was... This is our real po day. I had a Volvo, one of them box style Volvos. You know, that was, you know, kind of long, medium long. <laughs> it was and, long. <laughs> <laughs> and one day that bastard wouldn't start. Now, I can't remember how I figured out the piece that I needed. But we went to the junkyard to look for the piece. So we went to the junkyard, I saw the piece, and I looked at the piece, I said, this piece don't look right. It's told I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I can fix the one I got. So I went home, and I went in the kitchen and got a piece of aluminum foil, and put it on the spot on there, and started that song be right on up. Went to church the next Sunday, said, y'all guess what? The Lord showed me how to start my car with aluminum foil. <laughs> You literally saved three hundred dollars. Yeah, that with piece a five like a, cent piece of aluminum foil. Piece of aluminum foil. Yep, He's, that's a starter right on up, boy. You said if I could get that piece to connect with, with that, that piece, piece right there, uh -huh. and I could get this I car to start. Aluminum foil. Yeah, I said I'm definitely my daddy's son, boy. Cause yes, yeah, boy. <laughs> like that time my, when I was coming up, my car was running hot, and you put a target switch on. The I fan. had a target switch too. Uh huh. So yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. So. Now we got Charlotte, you know the, the um, I can't remember the white chick's name that's been helping her out. I do. Is it Linda? Is it Linda? I don't know. Y'all will tell me. I know. Um, you know, of course, she's going around digging up all the dirt on the Landry's and the Brudros. Well, come to find out, the Landry's, of course, they're dirty. You know, like we have known them to be. Mm -hmm. But the Brudros are kind of like, what they're presenting at this point is... It's basically what the evidence is saying they are, you know, they're not money hungry. They have this, they have that, you know, the brothers are splitting, you know, equity with this, that, and the third. And then Charlie asked, say, you know, well, what about Jacob Brujo? You know, I want yeah, to know what's going question. on. And I said, why? Yeah, why? Yeah. And homegirl was like, you know, he's pretty stand up. You know, I can't find anything else on him. Now, if he was over at the Landry side, they got prostitution problems. They sponging their numbers. They do all kinds of stuff over there. But them Brujos, they, they all right. I said, mm-hmm. Well, wait Charlie. a minute. Could you, uh, this is just a thought. I could be wrong. Uh -huh. I've been wrong before in my life, and I will continue to be wrong sometimes. All right. But could it be possibly that the Boudreaux intentionally keep a clean record? So you and do everything factor. through yeah, and do everything through the Landry. So the the dirt is under the Landry's name, but it's under, all of us. Yeah, but it's all of everybody. Yeah, I thought about that too. Yeah, because when something just is because they might be thinking somebody gonna go and do some some research and try to dig up some stuff in this age. Yep. So, I call Charlie. Told Charlie, I need you to take Mr. Prosper to his doctor's appointment because. He one of them old heads. If you he don't take going, him, he ain't going. He don't trust no doctors and he don't trust no banks. So. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor's going to kill him and the bank going to steal his money. 
and he had a whole stack of mail on that table too. <laughs> so she goes over to the house because you know saying no to Aunt Vi is like saying no to a kid that's having a temper tantrum. Mm -hmm. It's really not gonna happen. And she gets over to the house and Mr. Pro Mr. Prosper is delaying and he's stalling. And he's a human and a hon and he's sitting there and he can't find the paperwork to take to the doctor's office. <laughs> and then he wants to tell her a story. She he said, your daddy always said you headstrong. Just sit down so I can tell you a story. And I said, no, no, no. <laughs> we need to go to the doctor. Uh huh. So eventually Charlie was like, you know what, Mr. Prosper. <laughs> How about we go ahead and reschedule this appointment for tomorrow? <laughs> I said, well, when can you get an appointment for the next day? Yeah. God knows. We just got to call a week in advance. A week? Months? Sometimes months. Yeah, all depending on if the, the doctor any good. Uh-huh. And the specialist is about three to six months. Yeah. I said, oh, so you can just change that doctor's appointment around for tomorrow. You know, she saw a horn in his um kitchen. And, you know, she's learning a little bit about Prosper by being in his house. And come to find out that he played the horn. So I'm assuming that he probably played the horn down in um, the French quarters where everybody else play at. And mm -hmm. he said, I was pretty good at it too. He said, now I'm just old. You know, my best friend gone. I bet he's and, looking and and I got a, Yeah, and I got a bad back. So, of course, the next day she Why came. Why do I always do that though? Oh, <laughs> old people are the most manipulative people on this planet. You hear me? Say, so, you know what? I can't fry that chicken no more because... I got too much arthritis in my finger. See, I can't, you know, I can't. You see what my grandmother does to me. She teach. She and like, then the next week you come at the house, they frying chicken for the shell. Huh? My grandma told me she ain't ever cooking for us no more. And she meant it. It's been how many years? At so least long, 10. Yeah, at least 10, yeah. She told, she told me, I taught you everything I know. And if you don't get in there, cook it yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. See, this is what my grandma said. You don't get in there, cook it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she'll never finish. Get it. She'll never finish. No finish, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was just talking. Yeah, I went down the other day. I mm -hmm. went on to the Walmart. We came on back again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you know, Maxine, man, she she ain't no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, joking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what they be doing. Mm -hmm. He came like, down huh? here and I'm going to get my wine. And I told my pastor, don't ask me no question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my grandma. See, I, lo I love the Lord, but I love my mm -hmm wine too. <laughs> and I told my pastor about it too. I said, okay, grandma. And I goes, what she told me, I goes to church with a knife in my pocket. I said, I know. That's where we get it from. That's why we always strapped. <laughs> I said, we got it from you. So, uh, Mr. Prosper goes on over there. Finally gets him to the doctor. No. Charlie came back the next day to pick him up. Now, Mr. Prosper, I said, don't don't start the little <laughs> skit today. He walking extra slow. You know, any other time, he good on that cane. We know. We know his pace by now. Yeah, we got that in our oh, real life, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's my mom. So, let me... Shh, is she here? No, she ain't here. No, she ain't here. Um, before I talk too loud, she bust through that door. What you, what you say? <laughs> So, I'm walking extra slow to the car, and he realized he don't have his jacket. It's probably 115 out there where you at. <laughs> you can, you will manage in that doctor's office for a little while. I know what you're Yeah. Sent Charlie back in there to get his jacket. He went on to the car. Well, good thing that she kind of did do that, because she went on, when she picked it up, she saw an eviction letter from the Landry's on the table. Come find out. Mr. Prosper lost his land a long time ago, and he's been leasing the land back from the Landry's this entire time, and that has been his secret. Them old folk is full of secrets, too. Yeah. And told Charlie, and, and you better keep this between me and you. This is my business. But see, the bad part about it is by the time you figure it out. It's too late. It's too late. And it's too, you know, it, it could have been like $1,000 to help you get out of it at the time that it first happened. But by the time you let me know, now it's 20000 Yeah. Remember my grandma did that shit? Yeah. My grandma, I don't, I don't try to tell my family business. My grandma, you know how, I don't know if they do it with y'all at, but in the country, where my grandma lives in the country cruncher, the county will come around and kind of assess your land and assess your house and see if you need like winterization and different stuff like that. Yeah. And they'll qualify you for these free programs for the elderly to get little stuff, new windows, door frame and stuff like that. And you know, anybody that's country, they love a free thing. Yep, it don't even matter. On. They could have just put those on and got their house they, yesterday. And then they make you sign some paperwork that they that they won't tell you they need to read. Well, come to find out, 
my grandma don't sign over the god darn house yep. and the land. Yep. Now, my family, they sitting on about 20 acres mm -hmm. where her house is. Yep. And she signed that over to the county that at any time something happens to her from this year to, I think it was like a 15 year cap. My grandma was like 70 at the time. Yeah. They can take the land and the house and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. We went through hell mm -hmm. to get that stuff sorted out and had to end up paying a good amount of money to basically buy back what was already paid for. Yep. Back from these people. So if y'all got some elderly people in your life, you or older or people that, you know, very susceptible to people fraud and taking advantage of them, please keep an eye out. They ain't gonna listen. They not. They're gonna do it right behind <laughs> your back when you, you know, when you yeah, when you <laughs> when you ain't looking, they're gonna do it right behind your back and then they gonna then you gotta fix it. Yeah. And then we don't have no say so skit to go on down there no more. Nope. <laughs> like, hold on, didn't we? Yeah, this ain't Joe's. Them people was fitting to rob her. Yeah, they mm -hmm. saw and the thing about it, two years after that, somebody right at the property line of where my grandmother's um house is, they don't put a dude ranch right there. Yeah. They were planning on taking it all, all the way that. down. Mm -hmm. all I that. knew it. Mm -hmm. I mean a a ranch. Yep. Oh, okay. So, Prosper gets to the doctor's office, you know, and they calls him back. Now, y'all remember the little guy that helped Charlie with her car when her battery was dead? He works at the doctor's office. Yeah. Now, she over there like like um, James and um, fucking Daniel would say, she over there backpedaling pussy pop because she ain't called that dude. And she's making up all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what had happened was I would have called you. I got a lot going on. And that, and he's like, you know what? No big deal. No, I ain't But we can still go out for a piece of pizza, you know, whenever you're free and all this. So he handled it quite well. And I said, all right, Charlie got all the men in the town. Uh -huh. They don't see this new fresh meat because that's what happens when you yeah, you're when you're fresh, to the town. Yeah. Then when you're old, you. And you, yeah, when you're old and want you, then to, to a new piece come. Yeah. So <clears throat> ended up, what happened? Charlie ended up um, confronting Jacob and told Jacob, you know, what is going on with you and your family snatching back the land? I didn't say nothing when I saw the first farmer yeah, the, do it. The couple, yeah. There's another one. And now my family friend, that's his land. What is going on? Jacob was like, no, it's the EPA. Whatever. Um, they came around. They said, you know, we got to do this, do that, the third. But basically, he told Charlie, while you standing up here big and bad, huffing and puffing at me, you need to take a seat because our problems are now your problems. Mm. So let's deal. Let's figure this out together because it is now your problem, too. And I said, you know what, Charlie? This is what we all were afraid of. Yeah. Just because you don't got your little foot in the door with them does not mean that you took their foot off of these black farmers neck. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's true. So I don't know what's going on between um, Remy and Miss Nova here, but we noticed it last mm -hmm. time when they were standing mm -hmm. in front of that uh -huh. sink yep. washing those dishes that something has either happened with them before or they building up on something. And according to next week's previews, huh. you and Charlie O'Connor shake your ground as it is. Yeah. Which sisters can't be doing hmm. is messing with each other's old meat. We ain't gonna be able to, to we not gonna be able to tolerate this. Yeah, hmm. yeah, Nova. I hope so, she don't do it. Yeah, and don't. they're exchanging good old stories, and um, this one kind of kind of touched me a little bit, where she had found her father's old toolkit. What they call it? Fishing fishing box, tackle box. Tackle box. <clears throat> found his tackle box, and it brought her back to a memory where. Said Charlie was too bougie to go fishing. Ralph Angel was too little to go, go fishing. Go figure. So she, he wanted to take Nova fishing. Well, he had to stop by this little convenience store to get bait before they went out to go fish. And the daddy walked back to the truck with a busted lip. And these three white men looking at him with this smirk on their face. And she said, my daddy never addressed it. Never spoke of it. No, nothing. And she said, I was just infuriated. Mm -hmm. But my daddy wanted me to feel special in that moment. So he didn't say anything. And wow. it brings me back to like even now. Of how 
black people have been taking abuse from white people from the beginning of time mm -hmm. and you just tough it out yeah you know it's you, I it's mean, you, insane. Yeah, you, it really. But it's a way to preserve yourself at the yeah, same time. Yeah, at the time. same time, that's the bad part about it. Because if you go crazy, you're dead. Yeah, you could either die or spend some time in jail for something you ain't even do. I mean, and y'all yeah. stop eating at the Waffle House. Let's, and the bad thing about it is, I love Waffle House. It's the dirtiest place on the planet, but it builds character. But I'm not going back. It's the most unorganized chaos. Chaos <laughs> I've seen in my life. You'd be like, but they're eggs though. Like, how did y'all get this nice looking food out of all this chaos right here? And everybody, 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 everybody yelling, uh, two waffles, eggs with cheese cooked hard, <laughs> <laughs> Chris two Chris. coffees. I was like, okay. We got one dude that I, that I want. I like when, when he did that. Uh, that black dude. That the one that looked like he just got a prison. Yeah, yeah. That joker can cook because he, he just got. Out of <laughs> and he'll look over his shoulder. What's up, dog? <laughs> <laughs> but we ain't gonna see you now. Man, when I used to work downtown where we live at, man, man, it was this dude, man, that man. He ain't too long got out of prison too. But that joker could cook some pancakes, man. I'm telling you, they got. He had Crocker Bell beef. Uh -huh. Any pancake place you can name, he had it be. Hmm. Anytime you had people coming from different buildings. I guarantee if you open up a Mike's Pancakes right here in Richmond right now, everybody that was his customer will be at his restaurant probably every week. And it's bad. I knew about him and I didn't even work now. Yeah. Everybody was like, you talking about Mike to make the pancakes? Mike? Yep. Mike with how the pancakes. Get, yeah. How do you get famous for some pancakes? Cause see what, see what happened was, cause what happened, I was working that over uh, that. at uh, Bank of America at the time. So you just gonna put your personal business down the street? Yeah, I, mean, I, so work you there <laughs> yeah, I used to work in, I worked there at Bank of America. He, cause he was a cook over there first. And then when I moved to another job, my cousin had found him at another place downtown. We didn't even know he was over there. He happened to go over there to get breakfast one day. He saw me, he said, Mike, Mike. <laughs> When you get down here, he, I think he had been there for like like six months. He's like, you know what, man? Get me some of them pancakes. And they say, you know, everybody was walking. Everybody look, was going on. Y'all know what y'all look like. Y'all walking to salmon. Yep. <laughs> we had to walk like 15 minutes to go away to get pancakes. And mind you, the break, our break is only 15 minutes. Just to, is that why you don't work there anymore? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. Mm. So, being that we on this whole daddy board alone thing, we got Davis Weston came back into town. Davis Weston came back into town to see Micah, spend some time with Micah, but I said something ain't quite right about this visit. Hmm. So you always okay. got some skit with him. Well, he took him out. They had a good little time, and he got a phone call. So in the in the car, they're sitting there. They're still having this moment. And Davis West was like, you know what? I miss Daddy Boyd alone just as much as everybody else missed him. And I said, you know what? I Wait a minute. I felt a little something because I felt the kind of, I, I I connected with how he felt. He was like, you know, although he wasn't my father, he was just as much of a father to me, you know, more than my own father was. Mm. He was like in my big games. He made sure that he came. Mm -hmm. You know, he was very supportive. I we talked. We had our moments. He was like, I really miss him. And I was like, wow, that just made me mess you, you up. Yeah. <laughs> Cause Stanley's father was like a father to me too, mm -hmm. and I was like, I get it. That's that's yeah. a bond that's like beyond blood. Yeah. So I said, Dad, Davis West, and then he bucked it up with this. Yeah. He gonna come through and tell Micah. He said, Listen, I haven't done every everything right. You know this, <laughs> but you have a sister. Like no skit, Sherlock. <laughs> and he just threw it out. I, you have a sister, and I want you to get to know her. Like what? So Michael asked the million dollar question and I said, please ask. I said, because is are we talking about a win, win, babe? Um little sister, are we talking about a A grown sister? Hey, can you FaceTime me, kind of sister? I mean, <laughs> how old is this chick? She 13. Dang. Michael says, Does my mother know about this? Of course she don't. He said, No, not yet. But what had happened was her mother just passed away. And I said, So so You just so all this. You come to spend time with him, and you're going to dump all this trash on him after you done showed him a good time. And then I said, well, what's your plan? Like, well, are you trying to bring the daughter to New Orleans and drop off at Charlotte House? Or, I mean, what's trying? What, what's what's happening here? Mike just got so pissed off, he just jumped out the vehicle and he, just walked off. Because Charlotte, at this point, still don't think he was cheating with that other girl with, the, with that little 
No, the no, origin. <laughs> that he said he won't part of, but uh, yeah. And so, then we so got a, a whole different kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he said, you know, it was a, the biggest mistake of my life. I love this daughter. You know, you know, we have a relate. Did he say? I don't, don't quote me. But I want you to get to know her. Like, huh? Seriously, what is really happening here? So then we see a scene where little blue always comes back to blue. Blue's talking to Nova and his dad, Ralph Angel. And he was like, you know what? Tell me about Grandma True, since I didn't, you know, know her. What kind of person was she? You know, Nova's telling her, you know, you, this used to be my bedroom. And we actually used to sit here and play and mm -hmm. have a good time. Very nice lady. And um, Ralph Angel was like, yeah, I miss her. And, you know, I miss her every day. And Nova said the same thing. And he was like, you know, so what happened to her? <laughs> and they said, you know, she got sick. And Blue said, hold on, what? Sick? Sick like mama? Is she next? Her too? Her too? It's like, no, 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 not sick like your mama. <laughs> she, she was a different kind of sick. Ooh. And, you know, she passed away. So, you know, of course, this whole time they're building up for this bonfire, they're all thinking about what reflection they're going to send up in this bonfire to heaven. So Blue said, I know what I'm going to send to heaven. I'm going to send Pop a thank you. Mm -hmm. As they was like, so what you thanking Pop for? He said, because I want to thank him for bringing my mama back. Because just like you miss your mama every day, I miss my mama every day. Wow. And he brought her back. And I was like, ooh. Wow. Ooh. Um, oh. It's really nothing you can say at this uh, yeah, point. Can't, yeah, uh-huh. So you get to the bonfire, you know, everybody's doing their thing. And, you know, you know, Unvi started it off and she talked about, you know, how they started this tradition and mm -hmm. how they were going to actually just pass the reins on down to Blue. Blue. Mm -hmm. And Blue took that thing and ran with it. Yeah, and he, he was did. like, you go on up there and put yours Don't in the fire. Don't put your mesh because they didn't want to move it. He said, put your meshes in there. Put it in the fire. <laughs> Set it up. No. I said, see, you taking this too far. <laughs> so everybody did their thing, you know. And as they're doing it, you can tell that a whole lot of people their heart started to soften in places that were mm -hmm. hard before they got there. So Ralph Angel, where he wouldn't let Dollar in with Blue and, you know, actually sharing some of the responsibility, you saw a little reflection of him scratching his name off of this school paper mm -hmm. and putting Dollar Sutton on there. So now he's actually going to allow her to co-parent Blue with him. And he told her, you know, we're going to figure it out. I said, okay. We see Unvi as she's doing hers. She's on the back of the boat with Hollywood drinking a Bud Light. They got their sponsorship. So they always, always find their way on in the inside of that boat. They didn't have some good conversation inside that boat, but yes, yeah. a lot of deliverance took place in there. I bet you a whole lot of us still having on that boat, too. <laughs> yeah. So she said, you know what? I'm going to allow you to help me with that delivery truck. And basically, she was telling him, I know you got me. Yeah. Rain or shine, If you she got don't me. know that by now, she won't know. So they cheers to that God doing thing. You know, of course, Nova, you know, she does her thing. And we have Prosper, Remy, all of them there. And of course, we didn't hear what they had to say. But you can tell, I mean, it's a really powerful moment between mm -hmm. everybody. And Charlie put hers in. And she said, Daddy, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to take care of this. Like, what does that mean? And I said, oh, I'll skid. And of course, they left us off with a black screen. <laughs> I said, mm-hmm. Go, Riri. <laughs> That's the only thing you can do at this point. So, you know, it wasn't a filler, but it's a whole lot of detail. Yeah, a whole lot. So, next week, it's going to be on that Chef Happy. Yeah. Show straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty show. See what? Two down. Holla. Holla.